Das Wasser hat ein Gedächtnis. Water has a memory. Und das Wasser hat so intelligent, viel mehr wie die Luft, nicht? Water is intelligent, much more so than air. Das Wasser ist, es ist eine kosmische Sache. Water is a cosmic thing. Water fascinates him. He observes it, listens to it, talks to it, and learns from it. Water is Johann Grander's element. He's known far beyond the boundaries of his native Tyrol as the discoverer of revitalized water. He's not an esoteric, he believes in physics, not in the textbook variety, but in his own unique form. He changes water, and the water he changes is able to transfer its positive power to other water. How he revitalizes water is his secret, but otherwise he's willing to discuss almost anything. The short time that we have here is an apprenticeship, and all of us are really apprentices. No matter how many academic titles you have, you're still just an apprentice. During his apprenticeship here on Earth, Johann Grander has discovered something that even ultra-modern industry is grateful for, because it saves large amounts of chemicals. In the first tests we ran before Grande had been installed, the water was almost a health hazard. There were millions of coliform bacteria in just five milliliters of water. But in the most recent tests, with the Grande device installed, there were no coliform bacteria at all. Beforehand, we had to change the water every three months because it had simply gone bad. There were so many bacteria in it that you couldn't stand the smell. Now there are no bacteria in the water, and it was seven months before we changed the water the first time. The cost has dropped by half. We use fewer chemicals and save money there too. It's simply wonderful. Two decades ago, in his search for a suitable source for his revitalized water, Johann Grande found a spring in an abandoned copper mine. It very quickly became clear that there was something very special about the water, and it provided the basis for his future experiments. We have two water for the water. We took several samples of water from the mine and put it under a microscope and I could see that it was full of minerals and was gleaming. And the last time you could see the minerals as hundreds of beautiful little crosses, nothing but crosses, and hundreds of them. Grande's biography is part of a contemporary history. He spent his youth in poverty, and getting an education was impossible. There was no opportunity, and in particular, no money. I only had seven years of schooling, elementary school, you know, because by the time I was 13, I was already driving a tractor and hauling wood for the district authorities. After the war, a period of reconstruction began. There was work to be done, and young Johann Grander made an acquaintance that was to change his life. Yeah, this was so. I had a friend in Kopf in Vorarlberg, and that was his sister. The way we met was that I had a friend in Vorarlberg, his sister, Kati. I went home with her to Tirol once, and of course I met Hans there. Something clicked between us, and we started spending time together. He was a really good-looking man, and I really liked him, you know, and I guess he liked me too. My future husband was working for a fruit dealer and he had to set out at one in the morning to get to work on his motorcycle. And he didn't have anything warm to wear, so he tucked newspapers into his clothes to keep out the wind. I had to put in a lot of overtime, you know, day and night. I have a monthly pay slip and I've kept it because it has 420 hours on it. I still have it. 
In the summer, I went out and picked blueberries. I brought them home and he took them to Bad Gastein because that's where we could get the most money for them. And then we built a house, and I must say, the whole family pitched in to help build it, my wife and the children too. An honest family where people help one another, that's a powerful thing. We did all the work ourselves. I'd say there isn't a stone in the whole house that I haven't held in my own hand. A welcome visitor to the Grandes' home is the well-known singer and former skier Hansi Hinterseer, who lives in neighboring Kitzbühel. What they talk about? Everything under the sun. Also, I've been begeistert from Hans. Being with Hans fills me with enthusiasm, just the way he goes about things and the way you can discuss it with him. It's just really good to sit down with him, it makes you feel good, it calms you. What he has to say all makes such good sense. And his belief in God means a lot to me too. You don't forget it. The former skiing star is not the only athlete to use grander technology. Current athletes like the world champions in trick cycling, Michael and Heiko Rauch, as well as their therapist, Bernd Laudenbach, do too. Mostly the people who come here are competitive sportsmen who want to return to training for competition as soon as possible after they've been injured. I use Grander technology to shorten recovery time. With the help of Grander technology, which is a very important part of my therapy, I can cut recovery time by at least half. For example, two weeks ago my brother was having trouble with his back again and Bernd treated Heiko with this device here. After the first treatment, the trouble was gone, and we could start training again immediately. I've purchased several types of therapy methods or equipment where, after you've used them for a short time, you more or less abandon them because you realize they don't work at all. But with Grander, and this is the honest truth, it's just the opposite. The entire product range he offers, well, it borders on the miraculous. Especially in the field of physical therapy where I use it. But if you understand miracles, what a miracle really is, then you realize that it is simply nature in flow. In that sense, all Grander did was to copy nature and give it back to us. Nature is the model, but it still hides a lot more secrets than it reveals. Grander's youngest son, Heribert, grew up in his father's workshop. There was a thing with the magnet. My father took a magnet and used it to pick up a stack of steel washers. He just kept adding one after another and picking up the stack. And we told our teacher at school about it, and he said, but that's impossible, because magnets lose their power over time. And my father said, if you let the magnet do its work, it gets even stronger. The power of the magnet gets stronger. It only gets weaker if you keep it in a wooden box. I mean, I learned that from the time I was a child. And when they told us something else in school, I raised my hand, of course, and said, but that's not right. My father told me something different. And I really got into trouble, and the teacher gave me a bad grade. Grander's director of engineering, Hannes Lage, came across a particularly puzzling physical phenomenon. The interesting thing was that both cartridges were built absolutely the same and as part of a series. And when you set them vibrating, every cartridge had exactly the same sound. And the phenomenal thing about the device is that because the cartridges were filled with different water, which had different information properties, the cartridges now sound different. We're going to demonstrate that now. I think you can clearly hear that there is a difference in the vibration, a difference in the sound. Just how the tonal difference comes about remains a mystery to us. It's phenomenal. Yes, you know, they all said, that can't be true because perpetual motion doesn't exist. Well, of course it doesn't exist, but that's not the thing. You have the magnets and their magnetic power, you know. In spring, for example, everything comes alive again. The grass starts to grow, the trees, the flowers, everything starts growing. 
Everything turns green and there's not a socket or a cable to be seen anywhere. Just think about it. Where does the power come from? The question of where it comes from is not all that important to Alexander Moore, a gardener who works near Vienna. The important thing to him is the effect on his plants, as well as on his family, and no one can tell him it doesn't exist. When it comes to growth, you normally figure the plants need a certain period from the time you set them out. But Kanda has overturned all our previous calculations. All the young plants develop far more quickly and the plants are very healthy. They simply grow faster. The quality of the vegetables has clearly improved and they also keep longer. Plants are 90% water and so with water that's more healthy and vital, the plants grow better, the vegetables become more tender. And that's not all. Our whole family has been using and drinking Kranda water, and since then we've all become a lot healthier. And it's the same for us as for our plants. It makes us healthy and energetic. Can water really take on qualities that make it better for people and plants than other water? Although science simply defines a water molecule with the formula H2O, this is a question that Granda pursued at an early stage. Yeah. And then the service station became available and there were five people interested. So we thought, we might as well apply for it, we won't get it anyway. But then we got it. Grander realized he had a special talent. He could fire people with enthusiasm. So without much more ado, he became a politician. In the 1970s, he headed the local Socialist Party. The group expanded from 20 members to more than 100, and even the local priest joined. That was an unbelievable event in Tyrol at the time. The unofficial party headquarters was Grander's service station. People wanted to work together to change the world and thought that politics was the way to do it. For the director of the Museum of Local History, Georg Jürschel, it was an unforgettable time. The service station had a nickname. We called it the Politburo. Of course, it wasn't really an office. It was a service station with its oil cans and so on. But there were chairs and there was always beer and we talked politics all the time. That's just the way it was. There were always advocates and opponents and they all met there. And people used to say, they're meeting down at the Politburo again. And it was a great opportunity for him to recruit people for the party. Some of the ones he recruited left their party ideas in his drawer at the service station because they didn't have the nerve to take it home with them, because their wives would have been upset. And everybody said, that's a socialist service station. But the conservatives came to fill up their cars too. Sometimes they included the higher-ups. One time it was the Austrian Chancellor, another time the Finance Minister. And of course the highlight was when the Austrian President Franz Jonas came to Jochberg. Interior Minister Otto Reusch was there and Hans Krande told him, you know our policemen are driving around in a little Puch 500 and it uses more oil than it does fuel. Can you do something about it? You know, I said to Otto, our police car, that Puk 500, it's a disgrace. It loses more oil than it burns fuel. Yes, said Otto, that's the kind of stuff I hear everywhere. And one day there was a new VW Beetle parked in front of the Jochberg police station, and the police in Innsbruck just about dropped dead with surprise because nobody in Innsbruck knew anything about it, that Jochberg was getting a brand new police car. And they delivered the new car, a new VW, direct from Vienna to Jochberg. And the people in Innsbruck couldn't understand it. They said, nobody told us anything. All we heard is that the interior minister talked to Grander. Yeah. 
After nine years, Grande was tired of the service station and politics. He knew that neither one of them held any future for him. But it was a period in which he matured and created the basis for another life. The nine years at the station was an apprenticeship. For Johann Grander, all of life is an apprenticeship. Grander recognized that he still had a lot to learn in life. And then they introduced the value-added tax, and I'd had enough. I gave it up because you're nothing but a slave to the international oil companies. That's all you are when you lease a service station. And that's when it all started, after the service station. And suddenly I stopped seeing Hans, didn't hear anything from him. I thought maybe they'd locked him up or something. There was no way of knowing. <laughs> the pressure came from people saying, he's not doing anything, what's he doing? People simply said, he's gone off the deep end. We always said as long as we don't have to go begging, we'll be all right. Because people had no idea what water was capable of. Today, people believe him. In the year 2000, the Russian Academy of Natural Sciences awarded him its silver medal, the highest award ever made to a foreigner. The representatives of the Academy came to Jochberg in Tyrol because Grander has refused for some time now to travel far away from home. For many years, they've been experimenting with Grander's water in Moscow, and they expect dramatic results. A year later, the Republic of Austria awarded Grander the Cross of Honor for Science and Art. Wissen Sie, wie viel Stück edler Hölzer es gibt? Do you know how much fine wood there is that you could use to make a violin? But there was only one person who could make a Stradivarius, and that was Stradivarius himself. And that's why I think that only Hans Grande can make water be what it is. Grande's water revitalization has become known primarily by word of mouth. Now more and more swimming pools in Germany, Austria and Switzerland are equipping their pools with Grande technology. They have all had the same experience. They use less chlorine, have better water quality, and fewer skin problems. Before, we really had a problem with algae, algae on the edge of the pool and in the pool itself. And we also had a heavy buildup of calcium deposits on our glass measuring equipment, but that's no longer the case. The pool more or less cleans itself. We have to do a lot less work to clean it. And we also use a lot less chlorine. We use about half as much chlorine as before. And the measuring glasses too. They don't get nearly as dirty or as calcified as before. We have a much higher water quality today, and we get very positive comments from the swimmers. The water is much more pleasant, and the people no longer get skin rashes, no itching. Our experience so far has only been positive. Nature itself is full of mysteries. This is with the it's the same with the birds. I noticed it a long time ago. Look, the swallows all fly away on the same day, and they fly far away, and yet they always come back to their nest. They don't have a map, a compass, or a travel agent, nothing, and yet they always come back. If it's good for people, it should be good for animals too. But what about the placebo argument? It shouldn't apply here, should it? My oldest mayor, who is now 24 years old, had always had circulatory problems in the summer when the temperature climbed. I mean, her hind legs would always become swollen. 
She suffered from edema, and it seemed to get worse and worse until her legs got really thick. But now that I've had Granda water for about three months, the problem has completely disappeared. Her legs are like those of a three-year-old. She no longer has circulatory problems and no longer retains fluid. Somehow, if someone had told me this would happen, I wouldn't have believed it. But a horse can't fool itself into thinking it works or into thinking it's doing better. Every day when I stop by the stable, I can't believe that she's doing so well. It took Grander many years of experimentation, and even his wife was never completely sure whether the sacrifices they made would turn out one day to have been worthwhile. He had now my turn angefangen zu bauen und das ja eins nach dem anderen und das Later he started building engines one after the other. At first we didn't believe that anything would come of it and that we could make money with it. But as it turned out it was all worthwhile. Und ja ja, wie es halt so ist, nicht? Es hat sich doch gelohnt. I remember that my mother worked as a waitress at the Waldwirt Inn so that we could make it financially. Inga and Hani worked at the hospital and provided us with money to do the shopping. There were times when I realized that we really didn't have much money. When I was attending tourism school, for example, I couldn't afford to go on the excursion to Vienna or on the ski week. But I would have been ashamed to admit that we didn't have the money. I always just said that I didn't want to make the trip. You know, when we had afternoon classes at school, we always took a sandwich from home. We didn't have the money to buy one in the shop. We always took our own. Usually they were jam sandwiches, and I didn't like them at all. I did, I liked them, so it didn't bother me a bit. It was a nice quiet time, because nobody else was there. I spent a lot of time by myself. A couple of times the bill collector came, but it wasn't all that bad. It was a good time. <laughs> Today, the hut where Grander used to experiment is a kind of private museum. There he enjoys meeting his old friend and advocate Franz Haselsteiner, who was the first person outside the family to have faith in Grander's inventive powers. Grander collects water from around the world. Here you can find water from the Ganges River or from the Rhine. Today, the two men enjoy talking about the good old days. This is Adria. I heard that there was a man in Jochberg who was working on things that at first seemed unexplainable to me. So one day I went to see him and asked whether we could get together for a chat. Later we performed our first experiments with a catalytic converter, water revitalization. We were both full of ideas and one of us would always know something the other didn't and tell him about it. We'd meet every two weeks, drink a beer and pick up where we had left off, and when one of us had a new idea to try out, we would set out to do it. The spectrum of possible uses for grander technology is relatively broad. The remarkable thing about it is that most of the proposals for using his technology in practice have not come from Grander himself. Often the initiative for new uses comes from business people who've been using the technology privately. Benedict Sutter owns a laundry in Metzingen, Germany. The Wäsche is nach wie vor vom Warenausfall here. Our laundry does just as many clothes as we used to, and yet we now use a lot less detergent. We definitely use 15% less than before. In the final analysis, it saves us half a cent on every kilogram of laundry we wash. But over a year's time, that amounts to around 12,000 euros, considering that we do 8 to 10,000 kilos of laundry a day. Grander gets his ideas from observing water. He takes a holistic approach. The 
I often think about trees. You know, they have to pump thousands of liters of water up to the branches, tens of thousands in the case of large trees. And it's in the roots that the water gets sorted. The coarse water goes to the outside, the fine water goes inside to every little twig, then to the leaves, the blossoms and the fruits. Tens of thousands of liters have to rise. But who does all the pumping? Above all of it stands an invisible power that Grander calls up. And then I ask him above. And then I look up, and I have my answer. I do it, and so far it has always been right. And it is wonderful to have this connection. Grande is completely convinced that there is a higher being, a God. While he has left the official church, he's quite willing to discuss matters with church dignitaries. And so it was a special occasion for Johann Grander when the open-minded Archbishop of Salzburg came to see him one day. But the church was also impressed by Grander. Archbishop Alois Kotgasser remembers their encounter. He seemed to me to be a very thoughtful person, a man who has a very close relationship with nature, with creation and one who has, has had experiences that have clearly been deep. And he speaks from the depth of this knowledge, and that impressed me very much. For me, there's no such thing as a coincidence. It's all guidance. For me, this guidance comes from above, and that's why you have to be honest, hurt no one, help other people. If you do that, I'm convinced that you'll have guidance from above. People who are open to the Absolute, no matter what name they give the Absolute, can have experiences that lead to a kind of mysticism. If they completely accept this inner hearing that people have, the longing that people carry within themselves, they are granted something that they could never themselves create. For me, reincarnation is simply obvious. People should be aware of the fact that they have to return to Earth and make good all the wrong they've done, whether it's murder or anything else, they have to make it good. It may be Russia and China in the desert, but they have to keep coming back until they've made it good. He told me with conviction that he had had an experience with God and also with Christ in his life. And the manner in which someone talks about that shows you whether it's authentic or not. According to Grander's philosophy, earthly things are only on loan to us from above, and people should use them with gratitude. I always say, nothing belongs to us. We've been permitted to build it and use it, but it doesn't belong to us. Someone once asked me who it all belongs to, and I said, it belongs to the Father. A little bit of it belongs to the bank, but otherwise it all belongs to the Father because we don't own anything. And when I say that, everyone is speechless. But that's the way it is. We can't take anything with us, and all we can do is use it. One of the most problematical uses of revitalized water certainly is in the field of human health. There is always the danger that people will expect it to heal their ills. Grander's water is not a medicine. Nevertheless, more and more doctors are experimenting with revitalized water. In the year 2000, they even got together for a first exchange of ideas. 
The homeopathic doctor, Barbara Reiniger, has been using revitalized water for years to support the use of medication. I have noticed, for example, that Kranda is enormously effective in patients with skin diseases, but of course that's only a subjective observation. I once had a patient suffering from extensive neurodermatitis. She was healed in only four weeks. She's the kind of patient who comes to see me when she has even a minor complaint, with a cold or with a light case of bronchitis, for example. But this patient has been free of neurodermatitis for the past seven years. I could hardly open my eyes, it was all just like, it was really just like a board, and my face looked like a crumble cake. I felt so embarrassed about the way I looked that I didn't want to go to my ballet lessons. And then, on the day that we got Kranda water for the first time, I got into the bathtub. And it really felt like I was taking a bath in silk. And that's what I said, because I had never felt such soft water on my skin. And ever since that day, everything has been a lot better. My neurodermatitis really improved, and by the time four weeks had passed, it was gone. My skin had healed. A female patient had suffered from it for more than 20 years and had tried conventional therapy, antibiotics, operations and all sorts of things. And of course the first thing I recommended to her was Kranda water, combined with acupuncture therapy or homeopathic treatment. And within only two weeks her symptoms had practically disappeared. Und innerhalb von zwei Wochen war das Krankheitsbild quasi verschwunden. At the end of the 1980s, Grander was discovered by the media. The strange man from Tyrol became the focus of journalistic interest. In 1989, the media were really good to us. There were positive articles in all the mass circulation papers. Die ganze Woche, the Kurier, the Krone. But all that changed overnight when they decided that I wasn't some little inventor sitting in my quiet room figuring things out, but a company instead. Some of them thought someone else must be backing the company. They said it was nothing more than a post office box. We were always convinced that my father was doing the right thing, that it was his destiny. And it really hurts sometimes to see a picture in the newspaper of some guy in a black leather jacket holding a catalytic converter in his hand and a caption that more or less said, Beware, con man. Some people call me a guru, while others claim I'm a member of some sect and so forth. But I'm just a free man. You might say our village is a bit conservative. People don't want any excitement, so they've always said he's some kind of nutcase because he sits there in his workshop and experiments. What can you say to that? I always say, your head is like your apartment or your house. Visitors are always welcome, but they can't stay unless you ask them to. Otherwise, you end up living in your own basement, and you have to ask other people what you're allowed to think. There are too many people like that. There's no disputing that Grander has contributed to a new understanding of water. His opponents and critics have been forced to tone down their criticism now that his technology is being used in industry, where it is no longer possible to attribute the effects to feelings and beliefs. Industry pays close attention to costs, and reducing the use of chemicals is an important goal. Costs are closely calculated and there's no room for equipment or procedures that don't pay. We studied the problem to see what we could do about it, and the only possibility we could find at the time to improve the water quality was the Kranda system, Kranda technology. In February 2001, we had a bacterial count of 3,240, far higher than the 100 permitted in drinking water. Then in May 2001, we installed Grander equipment, right here. And then in June and July, you can see the figure went up slightly. But by August, the count had gone down to zero, and has remained at zero, as you can see here. 
No one can explain exactly how revitalized water works, but there's confirmation from around the world that it does work. God created the world and that's why it all belongs to him. It seems incredible to me that there are still people who believe it all started with a big bang. And I often think, those people must have had a big bang in the head. But that's the way they think. And that's the reason our Earth is in the bad shape it's in. He likes to stay home. He doesn't want to go anywhere. He always says, I feel safe at home and that's where I'm going to stay. To him, a trip to nearby Kitzbühel is like going on a world tour. I don't need to get out on the road. I used to travel so much, night and day. And I've never had an accident. That's something I have to be grateful for. I believe in helpers, what people call guardian angels. I often told the children, think about them when you're getting into the car. And if someone cuts in front of you, don't honk or yell or point at them. It could keep you from having an accident. That's the way you have to see it. That has always been important to my father. He used to say, take it easy. He just wanted people to be relaxed and comfortable with one another. And when there are problems, everybody helps to solve them. That has always been the most important thing. My father is certainly a very modest man. He needs very little to get by in daily life. As I've said, I wish I could get him to go home with me to Corinthia for a week, at least for a few days, because that's where I come from, and I'd like to go back now and again. I still have relatives there, but it's impossible. He won't go with me. Johann's best pupils have been his own children, who meanwhile run the family business. And my father always said, the people with a lot of money do research, the people without much money experiment. When you don't have a lot of money, you're forced to be more creative and do a lot of the work yourself. I'd like to get back to doing that. Johann's son, Heribert, is enthusiastic about his father's ideas. He's had a lot of other ideas, such as a device for measuring earthquakes. It worked perfectly, too, but then we completely abandoned it because we turned to water instead. I think our goal should be to produce such a measuring device again and to make it more compact. Back then, the component parts were so big. We should make it so compact that you have a portable measuring device that can predict exactly when and where an earthquake will occur. He's done it before. Knowing where an earthquake will occur is not the problem today because they can predict that relatively well by using satellites to measure the tension, but they never know when. I'm not exactly sure how my father did it at the time, but it was with antennas that he mounted on the roof and with an oscilloscope that showed the vibrations. And as time went by, they increased until they reached the maximum. And when they reached the maximum, it was time for an earthquake. But he couldn't say where it was going to occur. You have to do it in such a way that you know both when and where. Then you've got it. The experience of Alois Oswald is worth hearing. It sounds absolutely unbelievable. I tried at least 20 kinds of medications and home remedies and nothing helped. You feel completely exhausted, shattered. You can't work and you're in pain around the clock. And the pain is always the same. It's so bad that it makes you want to climb the walls. What counts for Alois Oswald is the result. He's now enjoying a new life. 
He can't explain how it works and he's not interested in doing so. Certainly his recovery is also due in large measure to his strong willpower and personal strength. It almost has to have been grander because I don't take anything else. I no longer have attacks of gout even though I take no medicine. I feel the way I did when I was still completely healthy 35 years ago. I'm back the way I was. I go on mountain tours and can keep going for five hours at a stretch. It doesn't seem to matter. I'm living a new life, a good life, without pain. For Grander, intuition is more important than formerly acquired knowledge. I don't have a university education, but I do know a bit about nature. I've observed it time and time again, and that's how I figured things out. It used to be that people thought a spring was something almost holy. No two springs are alike, that's impossible. If you have two springs and the one is 400 meters away at the same elevation, then its water is different. And that's the reason why it's so difficult with water, because science calls it H2O and thinks that's all there is to it. I can tell right away whether a person is good or not. I can tell from the vibrations. A good person is my friend right from the start. And the ones who aren't so good, well, we just stay on formal terms. I would call him a brilliant, modest person. Because despite everything we've been able to accomplish with our company over the past 10 years, my father has remained a modest man. It's still important to him that we all get along, that we drink coffee together, have time for one another, and that we can just sit down and talk.